Hey, everybody. Welcome. This is Take the Ring, and my name is Jeremiah, and I got a special guest on tonight. And I brought him on for one reason, and that's just to talk about music. Um, so <laughs> if uh, anybody follows George on Instagram, you know he's a big Nick Cave fan. Um, yeah, tell me real quick uh, while people are showing up to the stream and stuff, um, what, what what's your deal with Nick Cave? Why do you like Nick Cave so much? Oh, you know, I um, Nick's been a favorite of mine for quite some time. I actually just found my some of my first uh, ticket stubs um, from the early 90s, actually. And, uh, you know, Nick, when I stumbled across him, you know, he was just, uh, you know, thematically he was dealing with, um, I don't know, the same three things I felt like I was obsessed with at the time, maybe still am, like a... Uh, love and death and god <laughs> and uh so it was easy for me to get engaged he also you know there's something uh which is mythological about about nick cave and i feel like in a very deliberate in a deliberate way and i really appreciate that um in artists you know who are who have an element of uh play a role in their own story creating their own story and you know what will ultimately be like their you know their legend you know yeah so. totally so i had a question i only asking you this because i know you're a big fan so is the bad seeds like like uh is that a real like is that a crew and he only does certain albums with them no, or that, is it kind of like does he always have the bad seeds with him but sometimes he, you know like the heartbreakers and tom petty thing yeah, not as familiar with with Tom's Petty's situation, but um, you know Warren Ellis is a is a bad seed. Nick's cave, Nick's band was the, was always the bad seeds, and they were largely the same. You know, but different people came in and out, and some people have passed on. And um, uh, but this this recent tour, I just saw a couple shows in L.A. that were so beautiful. Um, that was with just Warren Ellis, who he's also done a number of scores with, and you know, uh, and that's who he's he's doing this North American tour with, and he's going to continue. Right. Uh, you also uh, we have a friend of the show Goth Peaks on Instagram ran into mm -hmm. you, and the he was super stoked. At the Orpheum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hey, they Goth, were nice. Goth Peaks, what's up? So um, I wanted to ask you about a movie, recent movie. Uh, La Flamme Rouge. Yeah. Can we talk about that for a minute. Sure. How that came about. And um, uh, yeah, I'll be honest. I haven't seen it yet. It's on my list, but um, the cast looks great. And uh, you and I were talking the other day and you said you had a lot of fun with it. So I just want to tell people yeah. a little bit about it. Yeah. You know, um, a Maze Brothers film, the Maze Brothers, Derek and Brent, uh, you know, they wrote to me. They were they're big David Lynch fans, and they were also um, big Return fans. And uh, you know, they wrote me and expressed uh, that they you know they liked Ray, and um, they also had had watched uh, my movie, and um, and they they just wrote to me, and I you know I was I was kind to them, and. Uh, and then one of them came to LA and said, do you think I could stop by and see you? And, you know, I just really, um, I really like, I liked, uh, I liked that about him. I just liked that he was really, I don't know, forward and really wanting to like engage. And uh, they, they seemed really talented. I'd seen some of their things they had shot. And so, um, yeah, they came in and I said, yeah, I get a casting director schedule maybe and just let me, let me know. And, you know, then they left the office, but, man, real fast they came back and they had uh, both those things. And um, so I said, yeah, you know, um, and I liked it. You know, I got to play this detective. And uh, and then shortly after, uh, you know, I got I got I got some messages saying like, hey, are you doing this? They said they told me you're doing this thing. You're doing this thing. I said, yeah. And it was Nicole, you know, Daria and um, Balt and uh, Balthazar Getty. And um, so, you know, I mean, I was really excited. I was excited to be in something with Nicole again because um, I, you know, I enjoy my connection with her a lot. And uh, and Balthazar, you know, I like, I, you know, Lost Highway is one of my favorite 
films ever. I think it's just, you know, important and amazing. And um, and I love him in it. And uh, so I was just, I was excited that he was on board and that I, he was going to be the guy I was going to be chasing, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the film. And um, yeah, I got, so I had, and I, you know, I had some scenes with Balthazar. So that was fun. Yeah. And you, uh, you ended up hanging out with him a little bit too. You wanna... <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, uh, I also, um, I, I regular at the new Beverly, uh, the new Bev, you know, they call it here. And, um, it's a cinema where they project film and they were doing an, a matinee series and I was going to all of them. Two of them were Mulholland drive and lost highway. And so I, I, I wrote to, to Baptizar and said, you know, you should come and, you know, it's going to be so great. It's going to be 35 millimeter. It's like in the afternoon, it's going to be just brilliant, you know? And he's like, oh, hey man, you sure, maybe I'll go. And I was like, dang, I don't think he's going to go. You know, it's like the middle of the day. But... And so I still, I was like, I'm going to yank his pant leg one more time. And I was like, Bob, you got to go. You know what I mean? I was like, this movie means so much to like pop culture, to everybody, especially the people who are going to be there. And he said, I think they're holding seats for me. And I got, I was so pleased, you know, I was like, this is going to be cool. So I got there and, you know, I was kind of, um, I was like enjoying like the surreal element of watching it with him, you know, <laughs> in the cinema. Oh, and yeah. then, um, but my favorite part was afterwards, you know, you know, it ends and you can, you can almost smell the smoke from everyone's mind smoldering after the film ends and I walked up to him and he had that that look too and I said man what'd you think he said I don't know if I've ever seen it and I was like man I've seen it 15 times and like I can't put my head back together right now I don't I can't imagine what you're going through and um he meant he loved it he said it was just it was great he brought some people with him and um, anyway, yeah, that was that's a notable fun time that we hung out for sure. Oh man, yeah, that's amazing. Um, so, and uh, we had talked before, so let's jump back and um, you're an actual, besides being in the show, you're an actual uh, Twin Peaks fan, like from back in the day. So I know, Very I, know big like, fan. I know you like yeah. Lynch, we can talk more about him later, but like, so what's about wh why Twin Peaks? Why are you such a big fan? Like, I mean, I know obviously it's a great show. Obviously, this whole channel is about mm -hmm. Twin Peaks. But like, what what do you like about it? Why do you keep coming back to it, even if you weren't in the new in the return? What what do you? Why Twin Peaks? Uh, you know that came at a really beautiful time in my life. I was in high school, so I was like a senior. You know, and it came. I should show you something I just found. I thought I'd show you. This is my. This is my address from growing up in Philly, right? So this is me in high school, and this is my Entertainment Weekly I've somehow carried around with me um, forever because I had everything at the time, you know. I had the cassettes and all that, all that stuff that came out. Um, you know, it was like, you know, I had no, we, I had, a, I had a consciousness of David Lynch already. You know what I mean? We, we had seen his films. My brother and I had seen his films. My brother was younger, and he's the one that was telling me David Lynch was doing a TV show. And, you know, and David in Philadelphia, he's just known, you know, you know what I mean? Like we, everybody knows him and um, especially in like art communities. And, uh, you know, Twin Peaks was such a world, you know, and I don't think I'd ever experienced like a place being so sensory and like a character, you know, and, you know, it just reminded me of at that time in life when, things are being revealed to you, you know, you realize there's so much beneath the surface, you know, and um, that really appealed to me. And, you know, just the light and the darkness affected me a lot, you know, and, um, and I mean, it just has so much style, you know, like everything was just firing in every level, like the music was cool. The acting was like really stylized. The storytelling was adventurous and like you didn't know where it was gonna go. And, and you know, and, I, and it was, 
you know, like a lot like Eraserhead and, and Blue Velvet, you know, like it was this contained place, you know, this concentrated place with this enormous universe. And that, that also has always uh, been something I love about David's movies and especially Twin Peaks, you know. Um, and I feel like the return really took that to a whole, whole nother level, you know what I mean? Just feeling like no matter where you go, there's this, there's so much um, depth and richness and, you know, uh, stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, and you met, you ended up meeting David Lynch. So you, you're from uh, Philly and you ended up moving out to LA and you told yeah. me you had, you ended up meeting Lynch years before you want to talk about that? Sure. Sure. Um, when, um, when catching the big fish came out, uh, that, that really, um, was exciting for me. And, um, I, uh, it just turned me on in so many different ways. And my curiosity was just through the roof about many, many things in it. And, um, at the time I was connected to like sort of a radio show at Sirius and they were interviewing authors and stuff like that. And David Lynch's name came up and I, um, I, you know, I had said, you should do David Lynch. I said, yeah, everybody says that, you know, <laughs> great idea. I uh, wasn't the easiest guest to get, but anyway, he decided to do it. And so I was, I had an assignment to, kind of make a teach, like make notes about, TM, which is the program he was going to be talking about and how that was going to be implemented in California. And, uh, you know, and I did a lot of, I did extensive research. I became really knowledgeable about that and studies that were being done and uh, various things like that. And then also how a lot of those things were connected to his work, um, you know, which to me extended even beyond the films. It was his, it was every, it was all of his art. And, uh, and so I, I, I submitted a pretty um, thorough document, you know, about how basically how to interview David Lynch. And they were like, no one wants to learn this. Why don't you come do it? Um, and so I ended up being a part of doing that. And um, which, you know, was beyond uh, any of my expectations of what was happening. And um and we got along. I we got along really well. It was just really easy. And um, I, yeah, I, you know, he was chuckling at me a couple of times. I just I could feel. I just felt like he liked me. You know what I mean? I was I was really happy about that. And then when they asked to go to lunch, they were going to lunch. The people from the show, and they said, "Do you want to go?" And I said, "Yeah, I'd love to." <laughs> and I mean, I like hip checked somebody to get the seat next to David. And, um, you know, whenever there was a natural lull in the conversation, I would just like throw in a non sequitur, just a question, you know, like you really never shoot on film again. You know, like I, even though we had just done an interview for two hours, but I, for whatever reason, I just felt like he was open to me. You know what I mean? Like, and I, I, I wasn't being annoying or pest. I was, I was being authentic. I mean, I was gen, I was really, really interested and I didn't get to ask even like a, you know, a fraction of the questions that I really wanted to in a conversation with him, you know? And so I just took advantage of the opportunity because I just figured, oh, when am I going to be sitting next to yeah. uh, at lunch <laughs> again? So what's going to happen? They're going to say no more lunch with Lynch for you. I, you know, so, um, and so I did. And also during that time, and this, I guess is significant. Well, it's very significant. I told him what I was working on because he asked me, he said, what are you working on? And I told him I had a feature uh, that I wrote and I wanted to direct. And um, he said, "He said, what, what's that? And I said, it's about a, I said, well, the entire thing takes place in the bathroom. It stays in the bathroom and it's about the people that come through there in a strip club in New York. And he just said, great. And just kept listening. And it was, <laughs> that's not usually how that conversation was going for me at the time. Usually when I would bring that up, they would do like, so what happened? Gangsters come in or 
what happens? You know, does something happen? And he was just, I don't know. He was just really open to the idea and um, positive. And I talked to him a little more about that. And I told him I wanted to shoot on film. Um, and that was, that was a challenge, you know, um, to bring up to people. Uh, um, that was not like something everyone was like, this is a great idea because this was right when Red Camera was coming out, coming out and everybody was like, we can do everything 20 million times and for right. a song. Yeah, yeah. And I was going, we should really do it on 16 so we can only do everything one time. <laughs> you know, it was like, a, it was a hard sell. But um, anyway, I, at the close of that, I, I said, do you think it'd be okay if I send it to you when I finish it? And I felt like I was making some kind of pact with myself at that point. Like if David says yes, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'll get it done, you know? So I did. Um, and you know, and that's how he cast me. Yeah, totally. And um, so I don't want to go, this a, could be its own video, but um you know, not to specifically endorse TM or anything, but, you know, I, I've been meditating a little bit to just help get through COVID, you know, just like all this yeah. stuff. And like, how do you, um, and I, I just did a video about uh, kind of the, the, the whole thing being a dream and, and how a lot of this has to do with uh, Lynch's like uh, the unified field and the collective unconscious and stuff. I mean, I watched it. Uh, yeah, how do you, uh, I, I guess, you know, maybe kind of like what, what's your, does, does it help you creatively or does it just help you like, per, like personally, like for me, it's just like, hey, it kind of like uh, calms me down. So I'm, my, I'm free to be creative. Whereas I think Lynch is more like, uh, like he uses it like as a tool to like go down into the, into the well of ideas and stuff, you know? So I, I just sure. kind of like, where, how do you, I mean, I don't want to get too personal, but like, how, what do you get out of it? And, or, or how do you use it? Or just, you know, you know, what, what do you think about it in general, generally speaking? Yeah. Well, I mean, I started, that's, I started in 2009 and I still do it twice a day. I don't miss, um, it does all those things for me, you know. Um, it it gives me a a a, a a a piece like I do have a. It's really pleasurable for me, you know. Um, like ranging from uh, kind of mellowing out to blissful, you know, like a range of pleasurable experiences, you know. I and I and I look forward to it. Um, and I and I I also feel like it is a place you know sometimes where mostly before and after you know for me anyway um, I will have I'll have a lot of my ideas you know uh, and um, you know and I just appreciate the sort of you know this this is just sort of happens to be similar to like a lot of things that are appealing about David's work but you know just what it does for time for me is really a value, you know, I feel like it slows things down for me um, and helps me. Um, I feel more present, you know, which I think is, is very creative state to be in. Uh, I think it's the ideal one. Um, and so if I, if there was one thing I could say, I would say my ability to be in the present has, uh, has become, um, stronger or you know i'm more capable of, of doing that on a consistent basis obviously not all the time i'm a, you know but um you know what i mean yeah totally no i, I appreciate you answering that um yeah so and I, and I and i think it's good for you you know i think it's good for you your health you know i i would agree um so the, so you're talking to david about making this film and then you got it made and yeah. it's brilliant. And, um, oh, thanks, if man. you want to just give a little, um, you know, for, for people that don't know, um, 
just what what it's about. Oh, I read somewhere. So is this like the did you did you do this? Was this is this based on your <laughs> life? I read somewhere yeah. that this was kind of semi autobiographical, but like yeah, yeah, yeah. I um I uh, was a bathroom attendant um in a number of strip clubs. I wore a tape recorder for a long time uh and taped things. You know when I people didn't last too long in that gig go figure and um but i was really i mean i was <laughs> i mean i worked there like two days and i was like this is a gold mine you know what i mean <laughs> like it was i mean it was not lost on me for a second because i'd sit there and smoke and read all day long and you know and i'm just reading like the coolest shit you know and like everybody there was like right out of like bukowski book and it was just like amazing and you know, there was a darkness to it and a, and a toxicity to the environment, of course, but like their desire for connection and love was just the same as everywhere else, which was fascinating to me. You know, just like Twin Peaks, by the way, everybody needing love. And, you know, I, um, I just was like, there's something here. I don't know what it is, you know, but like I was making sure I didn't forget it because I forget a lot of stuff. And so, uh, I just took a real journalistic approach to the way that I was um, cataloging my experience, which was endless, you know, because I worked there for a few years and, and you know, only a couple of days. It's hard to, it's, it's, it is hard on you, believe it or not, that gig. Um, and so, yeah. And so this is many, many, many years later, because that was in my twenties. Uh, I just wrote the script the way that I always wanted to. And I had been discouraged to write it that way many times. You know, I had just been discouraged to make the, the bathroom and the job, like the base code or a character in the story that followed a more um, traditional uh, structure, you know. Um, and so I had, I had, I had made a, a 15 minutes of scenes uh, as a web series, which at the time was not. People were like, "You expect me to watch 90 seconds on my computer?" It was like, "Oh boy, this is going to be tough," and it's different now. But that's all I had actually when I told uh, David about it. Um, but it helped me, you know, it's how I, I was able to have proof of concept that was pretty strong by having that much stuff shot. You know, the, the web series was different because shoes would, um, the main, the bathroom attendant would address the camera, you know, like little John Cusack style, you know, like, it'd be like, oh man, this guy thinks he's got lipstick on his collar, but he doesn't, but he can't see. So what does he know? I'm going to tell him he does, right? You know, like instead of it just happening. But I took that out because I wanted to focus more on the melancholy, you know, of it. And that's sort of pulled away from that. Um, so I have a Agent Ivy is a patron of mine on my Patreon page. And I got to, uh -huh. I, I pitched that we had a, that had you coming up and they got to ask some questions. And so she sent me this quote today. She said, I was so moved by the movie. She's talking about from the head. Oh, that's nice. and she said, it, it made me feel, it made me feel a lot of different things. And I wasn't totally sure as I thought about the movie over a few days after seeing it, uh, what was making me so emotional. She's like, sure. There's the obvious. And she's like the writing and the acting and the setting. And she said, all of it was so good. She's like, but I'm curious what, if any, are there any underlying like unspoken themes for you in the movie? She's trying to figure out why she was so emotionally reactive and maybe what, what was kind of your emotional undercurrent in the story or like, you know, if, if any. Um, well, you know, I do think that <clears throat> I think it's a, I think it can be painful watching people desperate for a connection and not getting that. Um, so I think that's certainly part of the, for me, I think, uh, I think the, the peril of wasted potential is very is a horrifying thing to think about on a, a long scale in life. And when it's when you're watching it happen or or it could maybe that feels like that feels like it's happening, you know, for sure, I think. And that uh, I think he seems maybe like 
he shouldn't work there, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, I, when I wrote it, I basically, there's a poem called The Shoelace, you know, by Charles Bukowski. And, you know, all these things happen, horrible things. Um, but sometimes, man, when you're tying your shoe and the shoelace breaks, that's enough, you know. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's part of it. That's what I think. I think that I think that there's a lot of uh, yeah. I think there's a lot of longing in the movie. You know. Yeah, um, yeah. That's a tough. I thought about. I was like, oh, that's a great question. I'll totally ask him. And then later, I was like, well, it's kind of like it's weird because you, you know, as an artist, it like comes from your heart, you know, or your mind or whatever. And then it's like. So what, what were you, you know, what's, what's explain to me what's in your heart. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, it could sure, be difficult. Right, right. Uh, right. So also uh, Matthew Lillard is in that movie. Mm -hmm. And um, I just found out that you guys are buddies. So yeah. Before we get, before we get to the return, cause he's in the return too. Uh, you want to just tell me, tell us uh, your, your history with Matthew Sh real quick. Sure. Uh, Matthew and I, uh, went to to conservatory together, Circle in the Square in New York, um, which was like a really this cool, uh, very excellent um, graduate program. And uh, but neither of us had had we were the young we were the young guys in there who hadn't really gone through BFAs. So we um, we became buddies, and uh, I I we had mutual respect for each other, and I think we were both excited about. I th we were both, um, I think I can say we were both uh, risk takers with our choices, like as actors, you know, um, and I feel like we uh, expressed that mutually to each other and stole from each other and stuff like that, you know, and, um, and he was actually, we were at, we had a theater company together uh, around the time that I was actually working in the bathroom. So he, he, he knew not only me, but yet this whole group of actors who had gone in and out trying to, <laughs> trying to do that. I was like the only one who could last. And, um, and so, you know, when I got the, uh, the financing together for the film, um, I, I, you know, I was, as you may or may not imagine, but you, I can tell you that they throw a lot of, when you're getting, when you're making an independent film, they want to get anybody in the world in it. Um, and I was offered and suggested, had a lot of suggestions made to people that were in TV shows and stuff like that, who I think are great actors, but I just really didn't want um, to ruin it by that, doing that. I just didn't want to have like these like cameo fest really, because it was such a, it was such a built-in danger of that script, you know, have people be like, Oh, who's going to come in next? And Oh, yeah, it's not yeah. anybody, you know, Yeah. but yeah. Matthew is just somebody who's acting. I always had a great respect for, and we were just really close. And so, I mean, I would have asked him to be in it, even if he wasn't, you know, as known. I mean, a lot of those people, probably 10 people in, in from the head or from Steppenwolf West, which is the group that we were both working with out here. Uh, Matthew and I, and um, two of them are dudes I went to like NYU with, where I used to ride the train with when I was like 18. And I'd be like, you you guys can work my words. I ever make a movie, man. You're both in it, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, and so they both were. And uh, so, yeah, Lillard and I, you know, we've just, um, we're still uh, close friends. You know, he's like family member to me at this point. I mean, I've sure I've known him for like 30 years or something like that. So uh, it's crazy. Yeah. That's and amazing. he's so good in Twin Peaks. You know, he was, he was really happy for me because he remembered me like, you know, and they'd be like, so what, what TV show do you plan on getting in? And like these professional orientations. And I'd be like Twin Peaks. And they'd be like, somebody should tell this kid that that's getting canceled, you know, cause that's right around. <laughs> me. Um, um, but I, you know, Lynch was my favorite. I was really vocal about that even then. So Matthew always knew that about me. And um, uh, maybe this is, I could tell the story about when, when I was cast or when we, you know, the you had these meetings that aren't really auditions, you know. I'm sure you've talked about it or know about that. But 
you don't, it's not, um, David doesn't really have, I think he thinks it's undignified to have people come in and read scenes, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause it kind of is. And, uh, so the, the, you, uh, you go in and you have a talk and there's like cameras and you just talk about stuff, you know, and, um, and the boss like gets to see you. And, uh, when I got an email, cause I, I think I was cast in a, um, slightly untraditional way versus everybody, Joanna Ray picking everybody. Cause David had picked me, you know, um, so I didn't have representation at the time, but I w was working on two, I was working on a Neil Abu play with Matthew directing it, actually. And I was going to be sent to Scotland uh, to do it. And I got an email from Joanna Ray, whose name I recognized right away, but I didn't have an agent and I didn't do anything. And I, and I, I had also gotten an email earlier saying that somebody Somebody emailed somebody, emailed somebody trying to find a copy of the movie about the guy in the bathroom. I was like, that's, that's me. <laughs> Pretty sure that's me. And, um, and so uh, when I saw it, I was like, wow, I may have to like bag this play because whatever this is, I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I would do it if it is what I think it is, right? And so I went in and it was very... Uh, secretive you know you had to be you weren't on top non-disclosure out the every which which way about the audition even you know like it was a huge thing to sign just to go into the meeting um i remember amanda was there when i went in and i was like well i think this must be twin peaks you know because this is a big that's a big person i thought you know i was like for, to be sitting outside in a room <laughs> uh not just being offered or you know i was like wow this must be it i was pretty positive at this point and then i looked through and it was Anyway, so I went in there and I couldn't tell anybody and I couldn't tell Matthew. I couldn't tell anybody, but I was like, man, boy, I'm going to be pulling the rug out from something if, if they call me. <laughs> so I remember saying like, I'm, I do have to do these plays. And they were like, oh, this won't, be, this won't interfere with that at all. I said, I said, great. But so as it turns out, Lillard had been called in later that week by, you know, traditional avenues, you know. Um, and neither of us really had talked about it. And then I found out while I was doing the shows, um, while I was away, I found, I got an email. Well, it was putting me on hold, you know, so I kind of, and so, uh, but I still didn't know about Matthew. And then when we finally saw each other in person, he said something like, you're like, you're in Twin Peaks, aren't you? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. Yeah, and yeah. so, um, but you know, the night of the, the night of the premiere, I was just, you know, I was so pleased. You know, he was he was amazing, and um, you know, we were connected. You know, our characters were connected, and um, it was just thrilling. You know, and he was really, I mean, he was really, really, really joyous for me because I was, I mean, I was over the moon. Because you know? uh, oh, getting yeah. to see the first two. It was just, I mean, talk about being part of the party. It was just like, holy cow, you know. It was it was freaking exciting, you know, and I loved it. I loved every minute of it. You know, I forgot I was coming up, you know what I mean? It was I was so into it. Um, it was um, amazing. Yeah, that's incredible. So uh I got another question. So Cameron wants to know uh when you got the scripts. Um, so we, everyone knows that you, that all, no one saw the whole thing except for maybe Kyle and, and, uh, and, and David and Mark, right. uh, and Sabrina probably and, uh, yeah. um, so did you get, he wants to know if you got them like scene by scene or do they just give you your stack? It's like, okay, it's these five scenes. This is your stack, you know, or, or did you, you know, like, I know you can't talk specifics but did you get them like you're like okay you're ray monroe show up on tuesday and they'd be like this is your scene or did you like here's your five scenes or ten scenes or whatever so you can kind of like get it together yeah it was the it was it was the latter it was it was um here are here are your pages and it was it was clear that the page numbers went higher than they episode of television you know what i mean um so it wasn't like 
uh, it didn't seem to me, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, I, but it just didn't seem to me like it, like, um, it just seemed impossible that they were being, that the page numbers were ending in the episode breaks. That seemed impossible to me looking at my page numbers. Cause I felt like by looking at them, I could tell that even if the, uh, if time was sort of questionable in some way, I could figure out there was a, there was an element of chronology that I could sort of piece together, you know, and I could also understand my role, you know, in the, in the, in what would be my part of the story, you know, which, and, you know, and that didn't, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I think as an actor, I'm pretty ravenous about material and research and knowing everything. And um, I think partially because of my exposure to David's work before and reading uh, Brad Duke's amazing book, um, just I kind of had a sense of, of maybe that that was going to happen. And so, like, I just knew that I would still do my work the way I do my work. I would just have to adjust adjust some things you know what i mean and i could ask questions you know on the day which is is how i is how i you know proceeded with it um someone else wants to know what was your favorite scene that you were in well is that it um you know i love that scene a lot i can tell you when i read when i read that scene um I just immediately thought this is one of the best Twin Peaks scenes ever. Like as a fan, you know, uh, and I couldn't believe I was, <laughs> I was going to get to do it too. But I mean, like, I just, I, it was just so cool. Uh, the writing was so good. I feel like I knew it right away when I read it, you know, um, and I loved it. You know, I loved, I loved the way David dealt with me. That was my first night working, you know, so nobody knew me and, I hadn't really been around Kyle at all and I was still adjusting to his appearance um, and being on set of Twin Peaks, you know, uh, and having coffee with Cooper, which was also all these things I was trying to, like, you know, regulate. Um, but I, I do love that scene. I, I mean, I love every second that I was involved. Uh, trust me, there's, I, I, could, I feel guilty even picking a favorite, but there's something about that scene that's, um, you know, I know why people like that scene is cool, you know? Yeah. Oh, I wanted to just, I got very, uh, I love that your Twitter handle is a uh, big Lee Marvin fan, which you're probably a big Lee Marvin fan, but that's also a reservoir dogs reference. So I was instantly like, Oh, this guy likes Tarantino. And that's, the the diner scene oh. just screams Tarantino to me, like from instant day yeah. one. I mean, there's there's obviously diners in Twin Peaks, obviously diners in Mulholland Drive. So there's that and there's Winkies kind of, you know, that kind of stuff going on. But uh, this scene for me was was totally more definitely had a more Tarantino vibe. <laughs> just wanted yeah. to throw that out there. Yeah, um, I, I can see that. I can see that for sure. Um, So let's. uh. Not, not anything specific. This is more someone like me already kind of knows this, but I wanted maybe you to maybe explain it to someone who might be watching uh, like that. David is very. He's very in the moment and like like I just explained, not everybody got uh, no one saw the whole script, so no one knew what was coming before and what was after. And I've always think like I'm not an actor, but like just in my daily life, like it would drive me nuts. Like I have to know like where something's coming from, where it's going. Like I have to wrap my head around the whole thing before I can like go, you know, go into it a hundred percent. And David doesn't do that. You just have to basically put all your trust in him to know what to do. Right. Am I explaining that correctly? Like, cause you, you don't know what's going to happen in the next scene. Cause you haven't read the whole script. So you just have to trust when he's like, okay, like you're, you're angry in this scene and he, does he just work it like take after take till he gets it or, you know, I mean, some of this stuff, like I said, I, I'm not asking you to explain anything that, that shouldn't be explained. This is 
kind of obvious if you watch right. the behind the scenes stuff, if you read, like he's, you know, people are fairly open about this. Just what, what's it like working with him on set, like in the moment? Um, well, my experience was glorious. I mean, I, I loved it. I feel like he had a, um, you know, I also had, I had the advantage of having most of my scenes with Kyle, who he had a pre-existing relationship with, unlike men, like a lot of days, I imagine when they were all new people, Kyle was somebody that, David was just, you know, they were in, they were in sync together. And so I joined that really humbly, you know, but like, I felt like that also lent itself to having some, uh, some sh shorthand, which was also nice. I think the, before I move on to that though, I think you're right about to, to bring out, um, trust because that I felt trusted when I got my pages, you know, when I, um, when I read what I was doing and what I was, what was happening with me, I felt very trusted if for, for secrecy reasons, but also because I wasn't an extra walking through the background or something like that. I mean, I had like a responsibility to the story. It was huge. Um, but, you know, working with Kyle was an amazing thing for me because you know, I, I had just come from doing just tons of theater again. So like I was really prepared for all my scenes right from the beginning. And um, and he seemed the same way because we had long two handers together. You know what I mean? We had three of them. We had this one, we had the car, we had after he gets me and they're long scenes man. they were like 10, 11 pages. You know what I mean? And we did those all in one shot. Um, and we didn't do a lot of takes, you know, we did, you know, we would do, we would run through them and he would, he would make an adjustment. Um, and then we would do them again, you know, but I remember, I mean, I, maybe, you know, this, this story about after he, um, the, when he, after, after Coop chopped me and I was on the floor, we, we ran through that whole scene and David brought us up and said, you know, it's gotta be more mysterioso, you know? And we said, okay. okay. And, uh, but I remember like, like a week later, he said to me, this here, talking about a scene, Mysterioso, that not Mysterioso, <laughs> you know? So like, I, I felt like that was a familiar thing to me is having like a, a director know that he can just tell you something without was chit chatting for an hour, you know. He would also talk to me right before we would go, and I just felt really filled, especially you know with the seeing Bob and everything. You know, he got me ready for that, you know, because that's kind of a tough thing to read and just immediately stand up and do. Um, it's kind of uh, intimidating, honestly, you know, to read that that scene. Um, but I mean, I always felt. You know, early on, I asked I asked Kyle about, you know, just like an actor question, you know, like, do you ever like worry that like maybe you didn't do like the thing that you thought was going to be really a good thing to try? And, and he said, the boss always gets what he wants. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm going to remember that every second for the rest of time, you know. Um, and it was just, I just immediately just, it was like relaxing and you know, I felt really able to do my work, you know, always. I felt like David is, he has such a, uh, you know, you hear talking this boyish energy and it's really true, you know, and I think that part of the, part of how that manifests itself is what we were talking about earlier with the TM, which is being in the present. And I feel like that really helps all these things you're talking about, like, you know, we don't really need to be in the future or the past. I just need to be solving what's happening right now and engaging with who I'm with right now and taking care of business here and now. So maybe that other stuff's not that important. Important if I if I commit to to, the, to these the media things, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, um, I get. Does that answer your question? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also <laughs> want to point out. Uh, Friend, friend of the show, Counter Esperanto podcast, posted this on Twitter the other day, and it's true. Might be the best line in all the return is when you say, uh, I think he's dead, but he got some <laughs> kind 
but he got some kind of help. Got got Not some 100%. kind of help. Yeah, I I lost my mind. I was, I was just cracking. I watched I was watching it by myself. You know? Like I just started cracking up. Like yeah, I uh, he did, he I did always thought that was funny. <laughs> he did get I, some uh, kind of help. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hundred percent. I um, you know, it's funny. I um, <laughs> I worried about that. You know, I was just worried about it. And I remember what happened was we had done. You know, a lot of times you have like your script with you, but that wasn't the case. There was no scripts on set, really. You know, um, and so I had done my entire driving up to the shooting with Kyle, uh, and that was kind of that was kind of a lot. Um, to do and it was like a, the circumstances were huge and um and it took a while just because of the amount of driving i did you know um and it was just a, that wasn't long getting all that done was long but it was just us in the car you know we were in a closed car it was just the two of us it was awesome it was amazing um but then david was like kale out and we jumped right to that um like right to it and it was a pretty big gear shift for me because I couldn't move my body. I was, you know, I was pretty locked in. There's cameras all geared up to the car. And um, I did want to like shake it off. I wanted to just do something to get in touch with what it happened, you know, what had just happened. Um, but I couldn't, you know. And so, oh man, I was, I was worried almost about it, but like, I just loved those lines so much. Um, also, when I read it, I was like, I hope, I said, I just have to do this. You know, I mean, I have to call. And I was also just excited about who I might be calling. And, well, I don't, you know, people have their own ideas. I know who I'm calling. But um, I was excited about that. But, like, I remember doing it. And I just did it. I did it. And, like, I just did that one that you guys saw. And I know I just waited and I just waited <laughs> and then just through the walkie, he was like, all right, Ray. <laughs> and that was it. And then we were done. And I did actually funny on my old iPhone. I had the message, uh, cause he, he wanted me to call somebody. So I called myself. <laughs> oh, wow. So I had this, I had the message on my phone for a while. Cause I would, I would go, who the hell is that? And I'd listen to the voicemail and it'd be like, it's me. <laughs> Ray. You know? And I was like, Oh yeah. Well, I said, I guess I could load my Blu-ray in if I want to hear this again. But. Oh yeah. Um, real quick. Someone has a question much, about the uh, Otis and Beulah scene. Like just a little bit about that. And um, did you, you, wasn't that the, um, it wasn't the first scene. You told me a little bit about this the other day. That, that was my first scene um, because oh, yeah. we left okay. we left there to go to the diner. Uh, that's what happened. But that was my first time, first walking right up and meeting Nicole for the first time. And that's when David introduced me to Kyle the first time uh, that night. And it was the first time that I was showing up. And right behind there where we, from where we came is where David was. Um, smoking he had a monitor set up back there and uh did and i okay so filming scene you know it's a world of truck drivers that's one of the great greatest lines ever um but i remember it wasn't being said exactly right and so i just remember david saying it a few times next to me i just remember him saying it and i was like it sounds great when you say it too um because he kept going you know he would say it and then he would just he would nudge us out and um and we would and we would go out and i remember he kept calling um the one guy eastwood even though that wasn't his name I thought it was that was mm -hmm. funny too and i um i didn't talk to otis is who he called uh, eastwood a few times so it was mm -hmm. funny um and beulah her I, i've met her i've met her a bunch of times in subsequent since then you know at uh like festival disruption or screenings or something like that um but we didn't there wasn't a lot of talking there you know i interacted with um the one guy in the corner as i was leaving we both did um but that was it, you know, that wasn't, we didn't do that a lot. There was some, there was some stage combat that had to be choreographed and dealt with, with 
with Coop coming in, kicking ass. Oh, um, clipping the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I mean that was exacting. I mean, like they Kyle blew through that, and then we just um, we just like cruised in like that. I do. I remember David say, "Don't smile to me because I smiled." I was probably like, "Holy shit!" Like, look at me walking into this room. Right. You know, I was to say, probably year old self. Yeah. Yeah, probably kind of nerve wracking if that was your first first day on set, first time meeting Kyle, and then looking back, um, it was great. So you and Nicole are like buddies now. You guys became yeah. good friends. So that was yeah. So that was the first day. You didn't know her before before no. the return. So you met no, them, and like, so like Ray and Daria became buddies in real life. Yeah, we were both reading my struggle. I remember when I was walked back to uh, my locker, uh, my um, trailer. Uh, Riley Lynch walked me back there, and he he mentioned from the head actually, and then he saw my book, and he was like, he was like Nicole's reading that book too," and that surprised me. Um, but we, since we weren't allowed to talk about this experience, like with anybody, um, I reached out to Nicole like that week and was like, do you want to talk about Twin Peaks? Because at least I know I can talk to you about it. Um, and that's how our friendship started, you know, and she, had, she was fan of the show too. And, um, and we also, we did, we had a really nice, uh, you know, we had a nice connection in chemistry when we met each other. Um, it felt like we knew each other for a long time, really. I mean, I know it sounds weird, but it did. I mean, it just felt like we we just sort of, sort of like eased into it real nice, you know. And she's yeah. just the greatest. Um, Agent Ivy wants to know, how amazing was it to put the ring on? Amazing and scary. Um, <laughs> it was amazing, you know. Um I, I, you know, there was part of me that was like, I really want to take this ring with me. And then there was another part that was like, you take the ring. How about that? <laughs> you know, I did try. I, I tried to steal a couple of props, man. And they, that, oh, was, yeah, so that, was, that was not happening. <laughs> did you keep a prop in a memento? I'll tell you one quick, when I, my first night, right? Talk about almost getting thrown out of the club. Um, there were these little pieces of, we had to, we had to give, when we were leaving the cabin, we had to um, we had to stop off and do some business uh, with this with something and um, and when you know when they reset start again you know they, everything everyone gets to return to everybody and so we reset but then we didn't go again so I had mine in my pocket and I was like I was like boy I was like I can't believe I'm gonna take home this cool thing. <laughs> One second later, I felt like a cop, like on my leg, being like, "I need that." And I was like, "Oh, hi, Drew. Uh, here you go." <laughs> so I, I didn't did not get to get to keep that. Um, but did I keep any props from the show? I really wanted my shirt because I love that shirt. The shirt that that's in the anything with blood is a is a printed out shirt actually because that was they were vintage shirts that I wore. They were really old um, vintage shirts. And I wanted to keep stuff, but no, I have a, I have a lot of memories and um, I'll have those forever. You know, yeah, totally. I mean, and, and, you know, and I'm in, I'm still, I'm in the red room still. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, Jamie says she was upset when Ray died. She wanted the character to stick around. Jamie, I was upset when Ray died too. I got, you know, I got a very nice, um, I got a very nice card. I pulled out these boxes. Maybe I, maybe I have it right here. So I found this box of Twin Peaks stuff. Here's my ticket from the night of the show. I sat next to Eamon, who I didn't know he, he was going to be, or that we were going to be so. Ah, here's from, check it out. This is their, our matinee at Newbev. Nice. Uh, uh, well, anyway, when I died, I got a card in the mail. And it said something like, so sorry you died. Um, <laughs> and it was from Christabel, who oh, I, hadn't nice. met, I hadn't met yet, but she was still um, clearly remorseful. That time. Um, so, oh, back to um, 
part eight, you and I were talking and uh, basically I agree with you that part eight might be my favorite Lynch movie. I mean, it's not a full length, but like it's, you know, it's, it's an hour of, of just, you know, pure heroin Lynch. Right. And uh, yeah. so just m- maybe even taking yourself out of it, kind of back to just what, what what was going through your mind the first time you saw it? Like, just as a fan, like the rest of us, like that's the night and you know, you're in it and then that you're in it. And then the whole bottom drops out of the whole story and we get that, you know, the last 45 minutes of it, you know? Right. Um, well, you know, it was sort of quintessentially all the, it was the, it was the sort of the cream of the Lynch crop in a lot of ways, the way it was executed and the, and the, you know, one of the things that was a thread through my interest with David is the, uh, you know, <clears throat> because once you eliminate the concept of predictability, you can really be present, you know, like as a viewer also. And I feel like that's what happened like right away. I mean, it just, it took a huge shift after, um, you know, when it, when it goes to the bomb and, you know, and it just, it was like exhilarating. It was like, there's no, you can't possibly know what's going to happen. Um, and it was just, I mean, it was so adventurous and exciting and dreamy, you know. Um, and it was just really, to me, it was, it was like, it was like being like an archaeologist who would, who had been searching for the Twin Peaks Holy Grail. Like you were, there was like these, this new um, module, this whole set, this treasure chest of clues and uh, directions to maybe let your thoughts go and um you know it's just so exhilarating um so we're getting a lot of questions about okay. uh theories and your character and you know some of the stuff that we talked about like who is he really working for did you read the mark frost book and that stuff um mm-hmm. so i guess do you uh do you have I guess separate from Ray, um, like, do you have, you don't have to explain it, but do you have like a, a, a theory of what the whole thing was about? Like, what did you think of the ending? Like, do you, can, can you talk about that or can you divorce yourself from, from Ray Ray's role? And sometimes I can, sometimes I can't, you know, um, sometimes I, I, uh, you know, we've we've rewatched together um, a number of times, season one and two, and and into return. And um, you know, I mean, it's it's really amazing when I have like a moment where I forget that I'm a part of it because I I had such a pre existing connection to the world and um, and the things that you're sort of talking about. And yeah, you know, I mean, I do have. I have a lot of my own theories and ideas and I have a lot of things about the return that, um, you know, as a, as a work of art and as cinema, um, that, uh, that I talk about, but you know, I, I don't, I don't often, I, I enjoy listening to other people and I enjoy reading and watching, um, people's theories, but I don't participate. I didn't before either, honestly. Um, I, I don't require an answer for a lot of things that I, you know, um, that's just okay with me, you know? And so like, I, every time I don't know the answer to something, I'm, I'm sort of pleased and grateful about that, you know, cause I feel like that'd be the end of the line a little bit, you know? Um, and I love the ending of the return. I don't, I don't, um, I don't know how I could ever, I could never see that coming. You know, we watched, and I watched that with people. That was the, I had watched the first two and the last two with other people. Other than that, I was by myself. Um, Cause I watched the first two at the, at the Ace Theater, you know, and then the, um, the last two were on at the same time. Right. And that was a cast uh, thing, a cast sort of hangout that Sabrina put together. Um, 
which was kind of cool because by then people had seen each other and, you know, different from a lot of other shows where people are like, cool, I don't have to watch that shit until part 12. Everybody watched every week because they had no idea, you know, when they were coming up. So like everybody sort of saw everybody's stuff. Um, and I loved those, those parties were, you know, just so much fun, you know, but like I watched that with other people and there was just a gasp at the end, you know, and I just, that was incredible to me. You know, it reminds me, it, it had the same feeling as when I see his films in, in the cinema with people who know what's going to happen. Who's, you know, 80% <laughs> of the people at the cinema know what's going to happen and you can still feel people exhale or have like a experience, you know, like this like amazing um, communal experience, you know. Yeah, uh, I had a similar experience basically watched the whole thing by myself. And then the last two episodes I had friends over and uh, yeah, it was really, it was, it was a bummer. <laughs> we were really depressed. I mean, obviously an amazing piece of work, but like that ending, I just like felt like it just like, I don't know. I couldn't process it. It's like ripped my heart out. Like we just all sat around. We're just like, uh, okay. So that was like a, Art doesn't really, like, it depends. It's got to be something special to really like do that to me. Like, I mean, I was thinking about that for weeks. So I, I wasn't like, yeah, that was so great. God, oh, that was great. It was just like, oh man, like, what was that? <laughs> it was like weeks of just like processing all of it before I could even like really talk about it. But um, yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, I still think about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, someone wants to know. I don't even know if you can tell this, but what did you hand the guy at Beulah's? Is that supposed to be a secret or can you tell that or not? I don't think, I don't think I can really talk about that. No, that uh, would be, yeah, Mark. I think Mark's tried to ask that question before. I like his persistence actually. Oh, okay. I, I don't but know I, that but I can't, I can't. Oh, interesting. Can't okay. Yeah, cool. Um, oh, so this one's more, uh, what was the vibe like in the arm wrestling scene what was that scene that's that's one of my favorite scenes it yeah seems like well some... what was the vibe like on set the day um well for me it was uh <laughs> yeah it might have been different for everyone else um i didn't have a good feeling about how that was going to turn out for me uh you know um and we were also we uh we were going to, i knew we were going into that also that day so even though we spent quite a bit of days in the farm um the the part with uh uh with that with the results of the arm wrestling match um, happening and my um alone time with with coop both happened so i knew that that was coming you know uh and i was um i guess i uh, i allowed myself to get involved with the uh pending doom yeah um god that's a great scene so oh, sorry i you might have just scene. mentioned it is it all was that all in one day arm wrestling and your death scene and all of that uh yeah uh, well the the end of the arm wrestling I, I i have a memory of that being broken up um because we 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 came in you know that was handheld in to the from the elevator to the other room it follows him you know, after when he when he just goes, that's for that's for kindergarten, right? You know, that was yeah. that was broken up. That you know, they were broken up that way. Um, but I remember because I because a lot of the I I remember I I, I remember because I had to be careful. I didn't hurt my voice um, screaming because uh, I knew I was going to have a a pretty long scene um, to do in the afternoon with with um, with Kyle. And then uh, someone else is asking also. So you never got to see, I never really thought about this. Like you only got to see Mr. C. Well, and actually I can, I can tell you that that's a, that's sort of a, um, unintentionally insightful question because uh, I had finished everything, you know, shooting everything. And then there was a, there was a period, there was a gap of time. And then I was going to be called back for Red Room. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So everybody um, who had red room scenes were doing those at the same time. Um, so it wasn't 
everybody, but it wasn't just me. And so I had finished everything with um, Mr. C uh, and then had done my scene on the floor, which went too fast, honestly, but that's how it goes. And um, so I did that. David did paint in my head and everything, and he poured all the blood, and we got that. And then they wrapped me out, and I had this, like, towel, you know, because I didn't want me to mess up the prop shirt even and um because there was blood everywhere and i walked out um into the into the you know it was like a warehouse it was huge because that red room was huge and um and really kind of glorious to walk into and uh but when i walked out this guy goes hey george and it was it was this freaking nut with like this green coat and and it was it was freaking kyle and I just, all I thought was, I can't wait to see this, you know, because I had no idea. I had no idea. He gave me like a hug and he was like, he was walking like, you looked like something out of like Sesame Street or something. And I just, I was so happy. I was like, I don't even want to know. I can't wait to see what happens, you know. <laughs> so well, I did kind of meet Dougie. Yeah, that's great. Um, I just didn't know. And I can't remember if it's on the Z to A box set or if it's on the original box set, but that's a great, the great behind this. You actually get to see David put the, yeah, the blood on. Like you're actually laying there, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, and you know, I closed my eyes the whole time, um, so I was really happy that that stuff was in there because I, I finished and I was like, man, I think I did a good job of being dead, but I just missed a lot of the good stuff. Right. <laughs> Right. That's, oh, that's great. Um, all right. Well, let's. Um, do you want to talk about? Is there anything else from the return shooting that you, uh, you know, a favorite moment or something that maybe comes to mind? No, you know, it was all I could talk about every scene with every a second lot of favor. Yeah. I mean, I remember every minute of it and I, you know, I've taken a lot with me and, you know, it was, it was very fulfilling. And, um, someone was asking about the, uh, someone was asking if, uh, if you'd seen my latest video and you don't have to talk about that specifically, but I just wanted to point out that, um, Sarah Lipstate, also known as Noveller, did some Twin Peaks covers that you directed the videos yes, she did. for. And um, just uh, any thoughts on um, shooting that? So was that fun to like kind of recreate the like capture? I thought it was good, like capturing the the kind of the red room vibe and all that stuff. I was like, oh man, like. Oh, and, and uh, she slash you let me use clips of it in my video. So thanks for that. Well, but, yeah, uh, you you helped us. Um, you helped us also, you know. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I mean, that, that's how we got connected. We, you know, we because we reached out to you because we were thinking maybe going to Mary's. We hadn't done the first one yet, but we were, we were Sarah was already talking about doing uh, Laura's theme um, also. Uh and so we thought, like, we got the idea because Mary had mentioned, Mary Reber, you know, who lives yeah. in Laura's house. Um, we talked about maybe going there because she had mentioned it being, like, um, an Airbnb, possibly. And we were like, let's go have the greatest nightmares of our life and Airbnb it up at the Palmer house, you know. And, um, and so, yeah, anyway, I had... Um, Sarah, look, Sarah is just so gifted and so, uh, like, not of this world, in my opinion, you know, with her um, talent and her just ex the way she can experiment and explore, like, this, like, um, I just, I think, I do think of her as, like, a, uh, like, a luminary for what she does. And um, I think that it's really... Uh, brave to take on Twin Peaks, you know what I mean? That's very iconic music and, you know, it's beautifully done the way we all know it really well. And I think that what's really successful about the recording, um, I'll talk about the video in a second, but the, the, the music is just that Sarah has such, uh, I think she just has such rich nuanced connection to it, you know, 
So I think that comes across in her playing. Um, it feels very moving, you know. Yeah, I agree. I'm a I'm I'm a big fan of guitar players and a big fan of like ambient and experimental type stuff. And uh, her stuff is great. Her yeah, newest album. Best. Her newest album is like really good it's what i um so people watching go check out novella go to Bandcamp and get all of her stuff because it's all it's all good you should just buy every novella record because it's like one yeah. amazing experience after another you know i mean like those are completely transcendent um experiences in my in my opinion and i love only amazing music <laughs> uh Someone wants to know where did you get the, where did you source the red room chair for her video? Um, for the for the for the video, Sarah reached out to Jason, um, who Jason Matson, who um, had 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 you they the, the show had used his chair in the return. They, he had one. Of, he had an original replica. He's he's a collector and he's a fit, huge fan and he's a prop guy. And um, he had recreated uh, a red room space for himself. And um, that chair and the lamp were both his. And the 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 floor he had done himself. Um, and he had just assembled all those things on his own. And Sarah read an, an article um, where he was sort of highlighting and talking about how Kyle in the return had sat in this chair and blah, blah, blah. And so she reached out to him and we were like, that would be one way to do it for sure. Like, because I was, I was feeling like an authority on whether it was a good red room or not. I mean, I was like, I think I can say, you know, this is good. Right. And it was really good. I mean, like, like it was just spot on, you know? Um, and so we, he was really, um, he was so uh, welcoming and hospitable because he had just moved and where he had moved, he had enough space where he could set up the entire thing. And there was enough space for me to be a little bit away from Sarah. And um, so we just drove up there with all her, with her gear and um, we shot that. And it was a little too ambitious to try to go Mary's um, at that point. And, uh, and also I just think it was going to be a matter of seeing, you know, just like seeing how, how that, how that went. And, you know, I think we were both really excited at how, um, and how it turned out, you know, I just think it's really simple and beautiful and focuses on her playing and, and I feel like it feels very, um, like it honors Twin Peaks a lot, you know, and she yeah. is. She's just cool. I see that message. She is just cool. Also, um, yeah, uh, man. I don't know. I really, really appreciate you taking the time to come by. This is super, super fun, and I am, yeah. Just uh, anybody. Got, I think we got a lot of the questions answered. I think people are great feeling feeling pretty good and happy St. Patrick's Day. And Happy St. Patrick. <laughs> yeah. Once again, really appreciate George Griffith stopping by. Really appreciate everybody Great. watching. And um follow me on Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook at Take the Ring 430. And uh maybe we'll do this again sometime. And sure. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. And all right, man. Thank you so much. Take it easy, everybody. All right, ciao.